this fine fellow here is Jordy and he lives here in Victoria, British Columbia on that vintage wooden motor cruiser and uh, he's quite tolerant of all the uh, sawdust mess I make as I uh, conduct a full refit on it here. If that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, uh, why don't you stick around and subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>
Here we go. Door frames are back on. Doors are back on. Uh, nothing terribly exciting yet. Uh, this, I don't know if you can see from the angle you're at, matches this curve pretty much exactly. I'll have to fine tune it a little bit once I put this in. So now I just have to cut this so that it'll fit between. Um, of course, this is a bit of a hairy cut, but uh, I think it'll it'll go okay. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. That drops right in there with just a hair. Anyway, whatever. It'll look like a nice continuous arc. Okay, love it, love, 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 love it. So now I gotta build this part. <laughs> no stress. Just to remind you what I'm doing here, I'll just show you the video again of how this is gonna open. Yeah, so you see what I mean? It's kind of a flip and then a double flip. So there's three segments of wood here that I've dressed down to half inch. And when they fold over each other, that's fine because I can have a butt hinge and they'll stay flat. But when it folds over here, it's got to be able to fold up and over the bull nose of the combing here. So I need a taller hinge. So what I did, I've got two sets, two sizes of hinges here, which I just bought. One is a really tiny and these ones will be great for, again, when I close these up, I cannot get them apart. Okay, these will be perfect for the hinges between the panels. And then I got a slightly taller hinge, which is the same width, two inches, that hopefully will be perfect for here. So that'll be able to flip it up high enough so when the panels flip over here, they clear this. And it's more complicated because this has a camber to it. It's more complicated because I've got to make sure they don't run into the windshield here, but I've got a solution for that. So, I've got to put in some temporary back... Actually, i got to cut the panels first is what i got to do. So some of you might recognize this piece of wood. Imagine that in a world where people might actually recognize a piece of wood. But anyway, this is the piece of wood that I dressed down from three quarter to half inch in my friend Brian's uh, thickness planer. And so I need to cut this into three pieces that will then be used for the flip flip. Uh, they're also much too wide, so I'll be ripping the edges off, which is good because they were never dressed on the side, so they're rough. Um, it also gives me the opportunity to make not all three panels the same width, which can help me with my running into the windshield situation. We'll get into that some more in a minute. Anyway, first things first, cut them into roughly the length that'll at least fit in between. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So here's all three panels in. Um, really liking it, really liking it. So here's my incredibly tight situation. As you can see, the combination of the three panels is a good inch too long. I'm gonna say exactly an inch. So an inch has to come off the three panels. Now, I can do that to my advantage if I'm careful. <laughs> so let's flip the first panel. Um, when this panel flips up and over, it's going to be sitting basically right there. Flush with this because there's going to be hinge, butt hinges on there. Now, I'm going to take the entire inch out of this one panel. That'll bring the next butt hinge back, saving me some space here. So I'm going to bring this back an inch and there. Okay, so that's an inch. Okay, so the next panel goes on. This is two. It was sitting this way. It flips over, so it stays the same way up, So, but it's going to be flush with the back edge. There we go. Remember, this is cut off in each and this edge, so there'll be a little overhang in there. Okay, so we're good. The second panel is on. The third panel was a flip, so it's going to flip and end up there, just like that. And in here is the end of this, and so this thing just fits. It sits there and I have half an inch, seven sixteenths of an inch clearance to the windshield. So this will flip over, bunk, and then the whole thing will flip over. Okay, now this is fiddly shit. I cursed already. I was gonna say, if I get through this sequence without swearing, it'll be amazing. So I apologize. I'll see if I can do a little better. Now, as I mentioned, this is in its flipped over position. So there's a bunch of things I need to do before I can determine where this hinge is going to go. Uh, first, how far over is it going to start? Well, I've settled on two and a half inches. So I'm pretty sure I'm happy with where this hinge is going if 
it sits nicely in the combing. And I think it does. I don't want it to be sitting way, way up on the curve. It seems to be in quite a nice place. So this gives me a pretty good idea how this will work. And I may raise it up a little bit on the combing, fiddle, whatever that's called. Yeah, see, so that's, that's what we're working on. Yeah. Hey, no cursing. Okay, so I'm going to set up the first hinges on panel number one. Now, when I do work like this, I don't gain them first. I actually just screw them on first, and then when they're screwed in place on the surface, I can take a knife and cut around the edge and take it off, chisel out. The holes will still be there. I can work my way down. Now, I'm actually setting this up with some tiny little Robertson number four screws. I will replace these with... Um, flathead screws when the time comes uh, but when you're assembling something Robertson are awfully handy number four use the yellow handle or number zero Robertson screwdriver very handy little fellow that it is there we go okay so that hinge is ready to go and I'll do the other side you don't need to watch all right so with the hinges on the panel I can now screw them on the hinges onto the uh, combing and I've added just a little piece of cardboard in here just to add a little bit of breathing space in terms of how that folds over okay so I've got it left right I've got it aligned let's get some holes in here you've heard me use the term equity in a piece of wood well most of the stuff I'm working with here I have a fair amount of equity in and I cannot mess it up okay so that one's done. Make sure everything's still happy here. Very nice. Okay, so that should flip right over. So there's two. Not allowed to screw this up. Tomorrow is going to be a miserable day. It's where I'm gaining out all these hinges chiseling out all the mortises. I think anyone who's followed me for a while knows that I hate doing it because I'm not very good at it. Okay, so this, theoretically, is a complete assembly. Let's put it on. Okay, let's see. All aligned, so this technically flips to there and flips to there. Look at that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, of course, the gaps are way too big, and this thing would not yet fit on the end uh, because of the gaps, but by the time I gain those out tomorrow, that'll be just the biz. So that can flip just to there if you just want to go down the companionway, or if you want it completely open, you double flip it to there. I like it. That's it for today, really. Well, good morning. Another day in paradise. Oh my gosh, can you believe this weather? Yes, hate to rave about it more, but this is mid-January in Victoria. It's actually almost too warm. Okay, last night after I stopped filming, I just tossed the plugs in. And uh, as you can see, they're ready to knock off now. And um, I do have, actually, a flush cutting saw. Uh, this is from Lee Valley. Uh, their brand name is Veritas or something like that. So basically, it's a saw that has the teeth all set in one direction so that you can hold it flush against the wood and not scratch it. You just got to make sure you have the label side down. Anyway, I'll show you. Now this is my standard approach for removing plugs. Uh, it's just that when I had so many to do out in the cockpit, the chisel works so fast. But this is so tidy. Okay, so now we come to the part I dread, and that's gaining the hinges. Uh, I've used that term before, I'm not sure it's universal. Mortising out the wood for the actual leaf of the hinge to fit flush. Um, now again, maybe I pointed out that my technique is, as you can see, is to put the hinges on first, get everything lined up, get everything working perfectly, and then cut with a, uh, to me, an Ulfa blade or a Stanley knife or a sharp knife, the edge of the mortise, which is one of the steps in it, and then I'll take it off and I'll chisel out the rest of it. Um, I have a tiny little router, you might have seen it in last week's episode, that I could possibly make up a jig and route these out 
I don't think the setup time and whatever is worth it. Whereas by just just sticking with it and going slow, I'll get this done. But dang, I hate this work because if I screw it up, yeah. Okay, so the process is pretty straightforward. You start with a pair of reading glasses so you can really see what we're doing here. Right, so I just scribe along the edges of the hinges. Now all the other ones I can do on the bench, but this one I have to do in place. Now these are lovely hinges. They're very deep. The leaf is quite thick, so it's a deep gain. Ah, it's all part of the fun. Okay, that's enough. Okay, now to it. A series of short jabs. Two, three, four, oh yeah, uh, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, done. Oh yeah. So here we go, all reassembled. Flips and folds, really nice. Just, just, just love it. Now, um, what I have to do is put in these little battens that are basically gonna support it when it's down. Okay. So for the real carpenters amongst you, that level of uh, dust removal and preparation for finish may seem completely substandard, but that's the magic of... I can't find it. That's the magic of that wipe on poly that I'm using. It, it's like an oil. As a result, you put it on with a cloth. The cloth is effectively a tack rag, picking up all the dust and whatever happens to be on it. By the time you make your last rub, it is dry and smooth and any dust that lands on it can be wiped right off. It's just an amazing product. Now, normally I put tongue oil on before I put the wipe on poly, but the last little thing I did, I put the wipe on poly on first and I kind of prefer the finish. I'm falling further and further away from tongue oil because it leaves the grain open. You see the grain so much better if it's not filled and the oil tends to fill a little bit. So I'm going to go straight on to this with the, um, with the wipe on poly and I'm sure it's going to look fantastic. We'll get to that in a few minutes. However, I do want to let the dust settle in here a little bit before I give it a wipe down and that is a super segue into, you guessed it, beer of the week. Okay, now some of you may remember that last week I was in Vancouver and while I was in Vancouver I dropped by a couple of new little microbrewery uh, tasting rooms. One of them was Brassneck. Brassneck, amazing little spot. The brewer is actually the brewer that started um, Steamworks um, microbrewery in Vancouver, quite well known. Really kind of a quiet little operation. They don't bottle, they don't can. Nothing leaves unless it's in a growler or in your stomach. That's not quite true. They're starting to pour in a few local pubs, but really an amazing spot. You can go in, you can sit down, you can try a flight or whatever, go for whatever is your favorite. Plus have a little, um, some charcuterie. I had a little, or some really great bread and some, and some pepperoni in there. It was a wonderful experience. So I've come back with my favorite of the joint. This is a multivison. This is a their take on a vison. It's open fermented with five grains and it is not strong. It is not very hoppy. It is just full and interesting. And what's most interesting about it, it just has a fantastic natural creamy carbonation. So that's brass neck. They give these little labels. It's the multivison. Let's pour. All their beer is unfiltered, but I don't find any sediment in the bottom of the bottle. 
You can't really pour a head on it. It's not that kind of beer, but it is so silky, smooth, creamy, and my gosh, folks, if you could smell that, it's just there's cinnamon in it, they say. Certainly floral, certainly some citrus. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite beers ever, and you can only get it by going to the Brass Neck Brewery in Vancouver. Cheers! Oh gosh, I love this stuff. Instant gorgeous. Oh, yeah, so yummy. Mm hmm. I think that's enough. Well, I've been working in the office most of the day today, and I didn't think you were all that interested in watching me put more um, finish on this. But look, it's done. I'm so thrilled with it. It looks absolutely fantastic. Flip and flip. And the doors. So nice. So nice. It really, really turned out uh, really, really well. I'm so thrilled. So, anyway, that's that done, and uh, time to get on to something interesting next week. But first, well, it's with some trepidation that I have finally started a Patreon page. Yes, I did. Now, I wouldn't mind a little advice on it, because I looked at a bunch of other YouTubers and the kinds of perks and stuff that they had, and I really didn't know what would be appropriate for my subscribers. So I put a fairly generic page up, but if you'd be willing to have a look at it and uh, give me some feedback as to what kinds of perks might be valuable. You know, we could do real-time um, broadcasts, we could do one-on-one, -on -one, we could do all kinds of things. There's the classic name on the bulkhead, certainly could do that. Uh, in time, once I start cruising, this forecastle will be a wonderful guest cabin to have people aboard. We're not quite there yet, but that will come someday. So again, if you're willing to give me any feedback on what you'd like to see as perks for the Patreon page, I'd be very grateful. Until next week, cheers.